Hi, and welcome to this session on managing stress with mindfulness. So being a foundation doctor inevitably comes with a whole host of stresses and challenges. And there's a real risk that we start to take those stresses back home with us into our personal lives. If like me, you've ever woken up in the middle of the night, worried that you've forgotten to book some scan or other, then you probably know what I'm talking about. But there's also the potential for the stresses that we face in our personal lives to be amplified in a job that requires us to be constantly switched on and performing and constantly looking after other people. So I wanted to start by telling you a bit about how I got involved with mindfulness and the effect that it's had on my life over the last few years. So about three and a half years ago now, my mental health got really bad and I was having a lot of panic attacks, I had really bad OCD, and I had some really bad dissociative symptoms. I was really unwell and I took a leave of absence from January of my fourth year onwards. And I really didn't know how to get better. And I was researching ways because I was determined that something was gonna change now that I'd taken a leave of absence. And I started to come across um, lots of blogs and lots of YouTubers talking about mindfulness. And I came across a study looking at metrics of fMRI function that represented some objective measure of happiness. And the happiest person that they'd ever put through their fMRI scanner and subsequent analysis was a Buddhist monk by the name of Mathieu Ricard. Now, this monk spends most of his time in the Himalayas meditating in a cave. And I thought, if this is the happiest guy who's ever been through this scanner, then there's something here. So I spent the next few years really investigating it. I went to uh, some quite long retreats. So I spent three weeks at a Buddhist monastery in the south of France, um, and I spent a month at the same one the next summer. Um, I also have been to two or three centers uh, around the UK, and I've done a lot of meditation in my own life. And that also ties into a lot of yoga that I've done and a yoga teacher training course that I did in, um, uh, the summer of uh, two years ago and the skills and the lessons that I've learned through mindfulness, through meditation, through yoga have really helped to transform my anxiety and make me feel so much steadier, so much more grounded and so much more confident in the direction that I'm going. And I'm really happy to sit here and say that actually I'm not bothered by anxiety um, pretty much at all. And I've also in the process learned to handle all of the stresses in my day to day. It's by no means perfect. And I still notice myself getting obsessional and I still notice myself uh, losing track of time and getting really disoriented in the hectic schedule of medicine but I've learned lots of techniques to help me ground myself, to come back to the present moment every time that I've noticed that I'm getting stressed and distracted and short-tempered and all of the other things that are kind of part, part and parcel of being a doctor. So how can mindfulness help us to manage stress? And first of all, what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is our capacity to be aware, to pay attention to life as it unfolds around us, um, within us, here in this present moment. Mindfulness is powerful because it helps us to more deeply understand how we're feeling and how our mind's working. When we get stressed, we can start to notice what happens to us. We can start to notice our mind speeding up, projecting into plans for the future or remembering things from the past. And we can start to pay attention to how we feel. It might be tension in our shoulders, contraction in the muscles of our face, a holding in the abdomen. 
a general sense of unease. If we want to try to let go of some of this stress, then we need to understand it more deeply. We need to know what stress feels like in our body and in the way our mind responds. We need to look into what triggers stress and why. When we start to build up this picture, we start to recognise stressful situations earlier and earlier. And we get the opportunity to do something about it. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But before we do, I'd like you to take a moment to ask yourself, what does stress feel like for you? What does it feel like in your body? How does your mind respond? What triggers stress in you? Take a few moments to have a think about it. So how do we overcome stress with mindfulness? Well, first of all, there's a really important point here, which is that mindfulness isn't about getting rid of stress. It's not really about overcoming stress. It's more about learning to relate to it in a more open way. And to do that, I want you to remember a four-letter acronym, RAIN. RAIN is a really simple yet profound mindfulness technique that can help us relate to stress in a more healthy way. So the first step of RAIN, recognise, is about becoming more intimately aware of how we're feeling and how our mind's working in any given moment so that we start to recognise the moments where we become stressed more easily. We notice that our breathing has become more shallow, that we're a little bit more agitated, a little bit more hostile, some tension in the shoulders, some holding in the tummy, and whatever it is. And that unique signature of stress is going to be different depending on who you are. But by recognising it earlier, you have the opportunity to become aware of it and to choose how you respond, rather than getting trapped in a vicious cycle of reacting to stress with more stress. So instead of reacting to stress in ways that simply make us more stressed, by speeding up, by trying to do things quicker, by thinking faster, by pushing other people away, whatever it is, we have an option to move on to the second step of RAIN, which is to allow. And this is quite a profound step because it's starting to accept stress as it is. We usually don't like to feel negative emotions, and stress is certainly a negative emotion. We don't want it to be there, and so we try to push it away. But the problem is that by pushing stress away, it actually just makes us more stressed, and it doesn't address the root cause, which is the way that our mind is reacting to the world around us. So instead of pushing it away, instead of wishing it were different, Instead of speeding up and doing things so that it will go away, we allow it to be there. We let it be there on its own terms. And then we can move on to I, investigate. And investigating is about asking, in this moment, what does stress feel like? It's about noticing the tension, the holding, the mind, all of the reactions that we're experiencing in relation to something that's happening in the world around us. It's about starting to recognise that stress actually has no intrinsic reality of its own. All it is is a collection of different sensations, a set of different beliefs we hold, often that we're failing at something, or that if we don't do something, something catastrophic is going to happen we start to recognise that stress is actually just a construct. A construct of our limbic system played out through our body and our minds. When we start to recognise that, we can start to see it a bit more playfully. It doesn't seem so life or death anymore. It doesn't seem so black and white. We can see that it's just our mind trying to survive in a challenging world around us. And with that knowledge, we can move on to N, nurture. 
And this is going to vary between different people. But it's a sense of asking, how can I take care of this emotion that's here right now? How can I look after myself? For most people, that's going to involve learning to be a little bit more kind to yourself. We spend a lot of time beating ourselves up about things. And a lot of the stress that we create is about feeling like we're falling short. So taking a moment to acknowledge that things are difficult and to just give yourself a break. That's one really powerful way of taking care of stress. Another is about coming back to something that's grounding in the body. Giving yourself a circuit breaker. Giving yourself a quick break. And for me, that's about coming back to my breath or coming back to my feet on the floor or the sensation of my body walking or if I'm wash washing my hands between seeing patients, it might be the sensation of hands on water on my hands. But whatever it is, it's about taking a moment to come back to this present moment to break that vicious cycle of reactions to stressful situations, to give ourselves a moment to choose how we respond and to respond in a way that leads to calm. So thank you so much for joining me in this short introduction to mindfulness. To really see the benefits of this practice, you need to apply it. And one of the best ways to do that is to set up a regular meditation practice. And there are so many resources to help you do this. Headspace, Waking Up, Insight Timer, which are all apps. Or there are loads of resources on YouTube and on podcasts, in books, and all sorts of other sources. And another way to help deepen this is with the practice of RAIN. RAIN is about fundamentally turning towards the challenges in our lives. It's about turning towards difficult emotions and learning to work with them on their own terms. Not wishing they were different, but listening to and learning from what they have to say. Finding freedom to choose how to respond to life in a way that makes you and people around you happier. <laughs>